Humans are unique in a number of different ways. Our ability to form complex thoughts and problem solve separates us from even our closest living relative, modern day chimpanzees. Though we share 98.8% of our DNA, chimps are still far from our closest ancestor. That title will go to Ardipithecus ramidus, whom both humans and chimps biologically diverged from about 4 million years ago. This potentially first bipedal human being set in motion a new lineage of cognitive thinking, emotional traits, and psychological capabilities that would shape and mold us as humans for generations to come. These behaviors not only molded us individually, but socially as well, creating unique relationships that surpass the standard male and female sexual correlations, relationships that prove to have positive and negative effects when described in larger contexts such as our ability to unite under trial and tribulation, advance technologically, or deviate under racial ties. Yet regardless of how much we like to distance ourselves from the rest of the animal kingdom, nature has an interesting way of reminding us of our fundamental roots. Our connections to the natural world extend far beyond our biological makeup. And makeup is an interesting choice of words, considering some physical behaviors require no makeup at all just an innate transformation that can merge two seemingly contrasting worlds. The connection between humans and the natural world is one that is often overlooked. Commonalities such as opposable thumbs link humans not only to apes, but also creatures like the wax monkey frog, the brush-tailed possum, and even koala bears all of which utilize opposable thumbs to climb or hold on to food items. Even our ability to perform social tasks, such as playing games or eating in groups, is not only unique to us. Birds such as jays, crows, and other corvids engage in playful acts, as well as elephants and dolphins, all with the purpose of increasing cognitive skills and building relationships. Hunting and eating in social groups, such as a pride of lions, helps increase the hunting success rate and further strengthens social bonds. As proven in the early studies of Darwinism, evolution is a natural occurrence as species become better suited to their environments and adapt to gain and pass on traits that enable them to have a biological advantage. And just like the traits previously mentioned, these adaptations aren't just unique to the rest of the animal kingdom. In 2015, Rachel Dozal was living a rather simple and successful life. As a college professor at Eastern Washington University, she taught courses on African history African-American art, and even African-American culture. She was a graduate of Howard University, an HBCU, which is known as Historically Black College or University. She even held the position of chapter president at her local NAACP, the National Association of the Advancement of Colored People. All incredible accomplishments and credentials for a black individual. However, there was one scientific problem. Rachel Dozal wasn't black. Around June of 2015, reports came in that Rachel, who had spent her life claiming to be an African-American woman, was actually the biological child of two completely white parents. I'm talking Snow White, Cocaine White, Vanilla Ice Ice Baby White. The discovery sent shockwaves throughout America with debates rising about what it meant to be black and social and racial identification. This presents a unique and interesting question as we think about similarities between humans and the animal kingdom. If we know all biological traits and activities are rooted in purpose and that species adapt to better suit their environments, what could explain this seemingly out-the-box animalistic behavior? The question may seem unexplainable when it comes to biological truth and understanding unless we know of the evolutionary trait known as biological mimicry. Scientists use this term to describe when a species evolves to look like a completely different species. The intention is actually quite simple. Mimicry helps protect an organism from predation. Surviving an encounter with a predator subsequently helps continue the lineage of a species and gives them the ability to navigate their environment without fear. In order to better understand how mimicry in the animal kingdom could possibly suit an individual like Rachel Dozal, we need to first understand what types of mimicry actually exist. If we're to consider blackface, which is intended to be a mocking or humorous representation of a black person by a white individual with black painted skin as an outlier in this discussion, 
and only highlight truly adapted and embraced falsehoods of race, this gives us a number of methods of mimicry to expand upon. But for the sake of CP time, we'll just solely focus on visual methods. Batesian mimicry is when a harmless species evolves to resemble a dangerous predator. This evolution can involve the mimicking of their color patterns or other physical features. Insect species such as the hoverfly take full advantage of this type of mimicry. This species resembles the color pattern and physical features of a well-known dangerous species, the bee. Much like the bees that they resemble, hoverflies are important pollinators. However, they lack a stinger and any venom that could prove harmful to a predator or humans. Hawk moths also display a unique form of Batesian mimicry. The larval form or caterpillar of this moth can actually resemble the fierce looking and highly venomous pit viper that inhabits the same Ecuadorian habitat. By inflating its eye shaped scales and retracting its legs, it can easily ward off predators when threatened. In the case of Rachel Dozal, this form of mimicry would solely assume her claim of being African American as an attempt to portray a more dangerous or threatening race. If we were to look at black people as far from a monolith, this form of mimicry would be deeply seated in stereotypes, making for an interesting form of protection, but also slightly contrasting as we analyze other natural mimicry forms. This takes us to another type of mimicry, quite common in nature, locomotor mimicry. Much like the name ensues, this form of mimicry involves a species mimicking another species' behaviors or movements. This is well displayed in species like the ant mimicking jumping spider, an arachnid that closely resembles an ant. This spider will wave its front legs to simulate the antenna of the copied species, taking on an ant form that is unappealing to predators. Some organisms can even take on the form of multiple other species. The mimic octopus is capable of transforming into various venomous sea creatures, including the incredibly deadly sea snake and the lionfish. It not only copies their looks, but takes on their entire locomotion as well, swaying, swimming, and sifting through the water. In a comparison of utter irony, Rachel Dozal could be using this form of mimicry to blend in taking on skin pigment, hairstyle, and even overall swag to fit in with the black community. Behavioral elements are likely the easiest mimicry to imitate, as the motions of another species can be a quickly learned skill. Plus, considering how the actions of black people have long been copied, regenerated, remixed, and reprogrammed for centuries, a mimicry of this form could be a high possibility. In a strange twist of biological development, mimicry can go beyond the single organism copying form. In some cases, two or more organisms can benefit from a shared defense strategy. This form of mimicry is known as malarian mimicry and describes the tendency for an edible or noxious species to resemble one another. Differing slightly from Batesian mimicry, both species in this situation are considered harmful, with each possessing their own distinct defense mechanism. This commonality helps quicken the learned behavior in predators to avoid both species, thus preventing less casualties on both of the mimic sides. This can be seen in the genus of butterfly, Heliconius, resembling other toxic members of their family, such as the monarch butterfly. This form of mimicry makes complete sense as Rachel Dozal isn't alone in her actions. Other white individuals, such as Satchel Cole and Sivi Vitola Adad, have both claimed to be living their lives as black women. Satchel Cole, an outspoken voice for racial justice and activism, apologized to her supporters stating she had used blackness when it was not hers to use and misrepresented her identity. C.V. Vitola Dad, a University of Wisconsin graduate, recently resigned from her teaching position, admitting to be of Italian heritage despite repeated claims that she was black. In each case, the misrepresentation of blackness brought resentment, doubt, anger, and hatred from individuals and communities all across the nation. In nature, mimicry is an evolutionary feature that may develop over thousands or millions of years and requires consistent learned behavior from the mimic's predator to know what prey not to consume and balance from the mimic themselves to understand how to best portray their model to ensure the optimum path to continuing their species. Rachel, who now goes by in Keche Mar Diallo, still claims to identify as black and has even released a documentary film called The Rachel Divide 
to further defend her position, further showing that these practices are deeply ingrained and ultimately become an innate form of survival for many organisms. With biomimicry making even more connections to humanity, there's still much to learn about how it can be best used to support our futures. We are now implementing strategies found in nature to help solve human design challenges in areas such as sustainability. The growing field of biomimetics has brought on technologies inspired by natural solutions, technology that we hope will lead to the continuation of our species, making learned behavior from situations like Rachel's and others that followed pivotal parts of our own biological growth. I'm the Hip Hop MD, this is Hip Hop Science, reminding you that curiosity is nature's PhD. Never stop asking.